If you're not being defined by a vision of the future, then you're left with the old memories of the past and you will be predictable in your life. And if you wake up in the morning and you're not being defined by a vision of the future, as you see the same people and you go to the same places and you do the exact same thing at the exact same time, it's no longer that your personality is creating your personal reality. Now your personal reality is affecting or creating your personality. Your environment is really controlling how you think and feel unconsciously because every person, every thing, every place, every experience has a neurological network in your brain. Every experience that you have with every person produces an emotion. So some people will use their boss to reaffirm their addiction to judgment. They'll use their enemy to reaffirm their addiction to hatred. They'll use their friends to reaffirm their addiction to suffering. So now they need the outer world to feel something. So to change then is to be greater than your environment, to be greater than the conditions in your world. And the environment is that seductive. So then why is meditation the tool? Well, let's sit down, let's close our eyes. Let's disconnect from your outer environment. So if you're seeing less things, there's less stimulation going to your brain. If you're playing soft music or you have earplugs in, less sensory information coming to your brain. So you're disconnecting from your environment. If you can sit your body down and tell it to stay like an animal, stay right here. I'm gonna feed you when we're done. You can get up and check your emails. You can do all your texts, but right now, you're gonna sit there and obey me. So then when you do that properly and the, you're not eating anything or smelling anything or tasting anything, you're not up experiencing experiencing and feeling anything, you would have to agree with me that you're being defined by a thought, right? So when the body wants to go back to its emotional past, and you become aware that your attention is on that emotion, and where you place your attention is where you place your energy, you're siphoning your energy out of the present moment into the past, and you become aware of that, and you settle your body back down in the present moment, because it's saying, well, it's eight o'clock, you normally get upset because you're in traffic around this time, and here you are sitting, and we're used to feeling anger, and you're off schedule. Oh, it's 11 o'clock, and you usually check your emails and judge everybody. Well, your body's looking for that, that predictable chemical state. Every time you become aware that you're doing that, and your body is craving those emotions, and you settle it back down into the present moment, you're telling the body it's no longer the mind, that you're the mind. And now your will is getting greater than the program. And if you keep doing this over and over again, over and over again, over and over again, just like training a stallion or a dog, it's just gonna say, I'm gonna sit. And the moment that happens, and the body's no longer the mind, when it finally surrenders, there's a liberation of energy. We go from particle to wave, from matter to energy, and we free ourselves from the chains of those emotions that keep us in the, in the familiar past. And we've seen this thousands of times. In fact, we can actually predict it now on a brain scan.